for most yeah, of these Marjorie, bands. Marjorie Walsh. I mean, <laughs> I mean, most of the bands are European, right? But I think yeah, maybe on this, list, yeah. on this list. But I think that's it's starting to you know starting to change now, especially. Um, and so much metal has got so symphonic, yeah. you know. So we need some new branches. Greetings, everybody. How are you today? Welcome back to the Banger Bar. We are here for yet another edition of Lock Horns, where each week we pick apart, scrutinize, and debate the heavy metal family tree that we created for our first film, Metal Headbangers Journey, way back in 2005. This week, we're going to be tackling power metal, and already out there in the interwebs, We've had a lot of discussion and debate already, but two reminders, as always, right off the top. Please subscribe to bangertv.com because we are in the process of trying to create an all-metal digital channel, which is very, very exciting. Secondly, I want to remind you that Banger is now the official uh, playlist on Apple Music, so go there and check out some of the lists that we're creating that relate to Lockhorns uh, and to some of the other shows that we are creating. Today, in the studio, I have a very special guest, Jason Decay from Cauldron. Greetings, Sam. sir. Thanks for having me. You bet, man. Thanks for doing this. For those of you who don't know, Jason is a member of a great Toronto metal band called Cauldron, and they've also, for those of you who don't know, have their very own beer called Chud. These guys very much flying the flag for all things epic and classic in metal. So, how are things going? How are things with uh, the band? Pretty good. Yeah. Um, happy to be able to be here and happy to be alive at this point. Yeah. So. For those of you who don't know, Cauldron suffered a terrible uh, motor accident in uh, Texas recently. I'm just glad you guys are, are here. Mm -hmm. You have a a new album in 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 the yeah. works or just our, been released? Our new album just came out in January. It's called In Ruin. Awesome. And it's out on the End Records in the States and High Roller in Europe. Cool. For those who don't know, tell me a bit about the metal that you guys play. Well, I mean, we consider ourselves to be fans first and not necessarily musicians all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's it's heavy metal or classic heavy metal. Um, and we try not to get into subgenres and stuff, but For just sure. stick to the stuff we love, which is the classic stuff. Right, right. And so if you like that, check out Cauldron. That's right. We debate subgenres here in the bar. That's what we do. But I've never met a musician that likes to be categorized into a subgenre. Just quickly back to the accident. Um, again, glad to see you guys are uh, alive and uh, together. Can you let people know how they can help out because uh, your drummer, Ian, uh, suffered a pretty major injury? Our guitar player, Ian. Sorry, my mistake. Um, yeah, fortunately, four of us, or three of us were able to walk away. Ian was in the hospital for a week, and um, if you want to donate or contribute or help us out, you can go to basementmetal.com and uh, either buy a shirt or donate more or less at your own will. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Yes, Lisa. We've actually got a lot of really nice comments about Cauldron. Okay, for those of you who don't know out in the interwebs, first of all, Lisa Latasura is the show producer. She's off camera. When you hear this sound, that usually means that I need to shut up and we need to move on to the next thing. But let's, let's hear what people are saying about Cauldron. Rock Orange Edits says Cauldron are awesome. Thank you. Subi Hurt uh, says, oh, that's Brian Boucher. Cauldron, make me proud to be Canadian. Thrash till death, 555. All the best to Cauldron. Awesome. Marcus Hammerstead is back. Why doesn't that beer come in a cauldron? Fucking great question. Would, it was brewed in a cauldron. So. <laughs> Good answer. Mo Mr. Totally Off the Hook. This dude just looks power metal. Good job. Best hair ever on Lock Horns. Kyle Jackson, Jason's hair is beautiful. Jesus. Good, some compliments. And really, hair is gonna be a subject of today's uh, discussion. So, first of all, wanna remind everyone out there that really the magic of what we do here at Lockhorns happens out there. 
We know metal fans care. We know metal fans have strong opinions of how we tell the story of our music. So if you have opinions of who's on or who's not on the power metal branch of the family tree, please let us know. So to kind of get into it, usually the way we start things off here is we start by picking up on some of the conversations that have been happening already uh, prior to the live stream in terms of who belongs and who doesn't belong on this chart. But before we do that, we should probably get a bit of, lay some ground rules here for what is power metal. Jason, just give me your thoughts on how you see power metal. Well, for me, power metal is just taking heavy metal or classic heavy metal and just taking it to the next, one step further, the next logical step in yep. terms of power and speed and aggression you know, where thrash might be all speed and aggression, yep. and speed metal's just heavy metal sped up. I think power metal um, brings the two together and, right. and still retains the melody. Right. I mean, so much of metal now has become so complex, mm -hmm. so technical, yes. um, that I think what we're seeing more recently is a lot of bands who are kind of not wanting to be part of that. Uh, do you have, what's your perspective on it? Is, is it important that you stay grounded in that more classic metal world? Or? Well, as a fan, I have my idea what, what power metal is, and I, I tend to stick to that. And if, if you're going to bring in all kinds of new elements to the point where it doesn't really sound like the original sound, then maybe it should be called something else. Yeah, you know? yeah. very cool. Well, I mean, I think if you, if you read the textbook on power metal, if there was a textbook, First of all, we'd have to talk about chain mail. Uh, no, we'd have to talk about melody in the vocals. Uh, you know, a lot of people talk about fantasy lyrics. Mm -hmm. um, a certain level of this impossible to define term epic yeah. um, as a characteristic of power metal. And to a large extent, certainly if you have the opportunity to go to some of the big European metal festivals, there's a lot of singing along. Mm -hmm. and, you know, for some people, metal is not about singing along at all, okay. and it's more of an aggressive affair. For some people, that's what it is about. It's about joining in together uh -huh. and singing along together. I mean, question for you. I mean, you guys trying to create a sound that, that, bring, that brings everyone together mm -hmm. in the room? Well, we try to create a sound that makes ourselves happy and, yeah. and hopefully other people enjoy it and catch on. Yeah. But... That's all oh, that matters there we go. at the end of the day. The bell Saved by the can bell. be a brutal, brutal thing. Lisa, what do we need to do? Uh, well, someone made a point I think we should uh, mention before we get too far into what is or isn't power metal. Yep. Okay. Which is our friend Pierre. Oh, we got Pierre is back. Who, what and who is power metal? So Pierre, um, Pierre, I mess up your last name every time, so you're PRS from now on. First thing we should do is agree that neither Opeth or Devin Townsend are power metal. Let's just get that out of the way. Fine by me. Uh, yeah, no problem there, buddy. Braden Mills, Rhapsody of Fire, Camelot, Halloween, Nightwish are musts for this list. Okay, some strong opinions coming in. Artur F. Castanha off Facebook says that Blind Guardian needs to be there so bad the music is the... Uh, epitome, I believe he's saying, of power metal. And furthermore, I think there's another comment there from Arthur. He's saying, Artur is saying that power metal is one of my favorite uh, genres of all. And four bands that need to be there is Blind Guardian, Iced Earth, Halloween, and Hammerfall. Well, so far, uh, so good. But let me bring up a highly contestable topic in the world of power metal. And that is, you got it, Keyboards. There is probably no more divisive topic than whether or not keyboards belong in metal. There's a lot of opinions on this, and what we're going to do is throw you to a clip of some interviews that we did for Metal Evolution, where we've got some well-known metalers that you all love talking about to keyboard or not to keyboard. Here we go. What's your opinion on, on the use of keyboards in metal music? Keyboards can provide size. You can make things more obvious, more dramatic, and keyboards can also um, provide people with the classical attitude, which sometimes is very necessary to have in a song. Did, 
the final countdown, did that push it too far for you? Is this still metal? <sighs> <laughs> I, I, w I wouldn't call it metal, I would call it hard rock or heavy rock, but you know, I, I never had a problem with keyboards in general, you know, you know the, the old bands from the 70s like Rainbow and Deep Purple, they, Uriah Heep, they always had, you know, the Hammond stuff. I always loved it, you know, and as Hansi said, if we need sounds from a keyboard, then we use them. We don't limit ourselves by saying, no, we won't use keyboards. We, we're not saying we're a heavy metal band, there must only be two guitars, drums and bass concerning instruments. Mm -hmm. And Final Countdown has never really been my song, but you know, I, I wouldn't bash it just because of, of the use of keyboards, you know. The, I, hair st the hairstyle was worse than the keyboards, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> so what do the keyboards add to the Maiden sound? They're quite useful devices for adding a little changing mood slightly, a little bit of melancholy or something else like that. Has there ever been a point with you and Maiden, moments where you're like, ah, you know, but if we push it that too much far in that direction, we risk losing our edge. Well, not, not wishing to be, don't wish to be, uh, yeah, it is important to avoid sailing the seas of cheese. Um, and to that extent, we, our secret weapon is that our keyboard player is not really our keyboard player. He's our bass tech. Therefore, he's not actually in the band. When keyboard players join the band, that's when you have a problem. Because all of a sudden, they're suddenly like, you know, oh, just a second here. It's like, how do we turn to shut up, you know? Um, so, so not having a keyboard player in the band is a great help. Because it's just like, do we need keyboards on this bit? Try a bit, yeah, yeah. Nah, let's leave it. Bang. Suddenly, if the keyboard player's in the band, all of a sudden he has a vested interest in the great union of keyboardists, you know, want to make sure that they can have as many notes as they possibly can in the song at every conceivable opportunity. And it's difficult to make a keyboardist look cool on stage, too. That's always been a problem in rock. Yeah, pushing a shopping trolley on stage is never a good look. <laughs> so, clearly a lot of debate, even amongst the metal champions about the merits of keyboards. Great comment there from Bruce that no one looks cool pushing a shopping trolley on stage. He's got such great lines. What's your opinion on keyboards and metal? Uh, I think if they're used subtly and tastefully and maybe not all the time, then fine. Mm -hmm. But if you're using them to create an orchestra that's drowning out the band, then no. Yeah, good answer. And of course the spectrum is tremendously wide. We can go from like a faith no more mm -hmm. keyboard approach to say a like children of Bodom keyboard approach where keyboards are getting solos alongside the, the the guitars. So really it is a highly diverse world we're talking about. Quorthon Venom says keyboards are very much used in power metal bands, but not all power metal bands have them. Thank you. I think it boils down to riffage and vocals being theatric. That's a point we didn't make earlier. Obviously, a big hallmark of power metal is big, powerful, soaring, melodic vocals, typically not in the guttural range. Rock Orange edits, keyboards can be epic when used correctly. And Roxanne Shaddix, keyboards are great. The musicians can rip quite as well as guitarists and drummers in metal. But really the question I wanna hear people respond to is, can you look cool playing keyboards? I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, enough about keyboards. Lisa, we want to move to the chart, correct? We do. And there's been a lot of discussion about one band in particular and whether they belong on there. A lot of people seem to think you need to do something about Scorpions. Okay, yeah, Scorpions here on the board. Bad Dualism from Costa Rica. Hello, Costa Rica. Maiden will be there soon. Scorpions, except and Dio are 100% classic heavy metal bands. They don't belong on this chart anymore. David Van Anthony on Facebook chimes in. Scorpions is just straight up metal. The only remotely power metal traits they had was with Uli John Ross guitar work. That's a really good point. Thanks, David. Elliot Memmi on Facebook claims that Scorpions is glam metal. I see them closer to Quiet Riot and Van Halen's scene than other kinds of metal at the time. Okay, fair enough. I think there's some consensus that Scorpions belongs somewhere else. Difficult band to categorize, of course. Well, they're German. The biggest German band ever. I don't think Rammstein has surpassed them. I could be wrong about that. Uh, and who else are we saying should be removed uh, oh. from the chart? Lisa? 
Accept. Accept. Fair enough. I think there's uh, some merit to that, except a little more traditional, heavy. I mean, they have their power moments, but overall, I, I don't think they need to yeah. be power metal. Fair enough, fair enough. And anybody else, Lisa, what, what's the world saying about these uh, bands that are on here? Well, down at the bottom, we have a magnet for Dragon Force. Okay, yeah. And um, there's some contentions about that. I wouldn't be too quick because we're hearing both sides about okay. this one. Okay, let me put that back for now, but on the board we've got Kevin Albinoski on Facebook says that Dragon Force needs to be out of this chart. They're just wannabes ooh, who play fast for the sake of playing fast and don't even give credit to the godfathers that came before them. Strong opinions. We like it. Ed Guy Avantasia would be much more appropriate. You have an opinion about Dragon Force, Jason? Um, I mean, for me, they're kind of just more speed pop. Yeah. Right. I, personally, there's a lot of keyboards happening there. And yeah. I don't think there's as much power as some of these other bands present. Right, so. right. I always mention the caveat, of course, we created this chart over 10 years ago, and at that time, we didn't know where else to put Dragon Force. So what is everyone else saying? Uh, Rich at the Metal Asylum says that Dragon Force need to go. They would be nothing and have Ed Guy and Gamma Ray to thank for their existence. The Nightmare Rider also claims that Dragon Force absolutely belong on this chart. Okay. They have speed metal elements too. Nicholas Biddle, any relation to Al Biddle? I don't know. Not that I know of. Al, are you out there? <laughs> Dragon Force should be included because they're one of the most popular or famous power metal bands around today, still doing power metal. And for those claiming they are speed metal, speed metal is an aspect of power metal. It's getting, there are sub branches of branches already forming. I'm gonna set them off to the side to acknowledge that there is some debate about Dragon Force. I kind of think they belong because I don't think they belong better anywhere else. That's more my logic. If you put them in speed metal, if you put them anywhere else, I think people would complain more. I'll oh, yeah, shut right up. Over. It's not about me. Lisa, who else? <laughs> who else out there? Dio versus Rainbow. Okay. Metalhead Rob says that Dio needs to go. He was more Nawabum inspired. What's your opinion about that, Jason? About Dio? Uh, Kind of the same as Scorpions and Accept, yep. just classic heavy metal or hard rock, yep. you know, and not really in need of a, a, a subgenre category. Right, fair enough. Dio, R.I.P. transcends all. None of us would be here if it wasn't for him. Uh, Lisa, do we want to create a rainbow uh, uh, magnet? I believe that would be appropriate. Okay, let's put rainbow in here because there is some consensus. Um, I believe we put rainbow uh, elsewhere on the chart. If we miss them, then um, clearly the guitar of Richie Blackmore will strike me down at this very moment if we, if we didn't. Okay, so there we go. We've got, we've, we've sort of cleared the air. Does everyone feel more comfortable? Take a deep breath. Scorpions except Dio are off. Dragon Force is on the sideline, matter of debate, and Rainbow is on. Lisa, what's next? You have more pruning to do. Okay, prune it, prune it. This tree metaphor is getting thick, people. Since we did this chart, we could argue that another genre of metal has emerged, and that is symphonic metal. We've had a lot of people out there in advance of the stream telling us their opinions. Abraham Alamad on Facebook says Nightwish, Nightwish should have its own Phylogenic. Fancy, we've got a scientist out there. Symphonic neoclassical metal branch with theory and within temptation, Epica and Ingve in it. I felt the genre was eclipsed in metal evolution as it was blended with power metal. Fair comment. Derek Jolly, take out Nightwish and put them in symphonic metal. Add Sabotage, Sabaton, and Ed Guy. Ollie Ray, Nightwish is not power metal, it's symphonic metal, and King Prince Chambermaid takes the cake for the best name so far. Nightwish is off the list. Jason, you have an opinion about uh, Nightwish? Well, I mean, I don't know where they belong, but I don't think they belong here. That's fair, that's fair. Nightwish is out. We're getting some consensus. It's a rare thing in Lockhorns. And let me comment on that. Our job is to guide traffic we want you guys locking horns out there. Don't just tell us who needs to go and who needs to be put on, but tell us 
why Ron Green is symphonic metal an offshoot of power metal or progressive metal. I think that is actually pretty accurate. I don't think we would have symphonic metal if it wasn't for power metal. Lisa, what's next? Well, do you guys feel good about all the bands that are left on there? Jason, anything to add? Um, well, I can see how Rainbow influenced, <clears throat> left their mark on a lot of these bands, but they were kind of more in the, in the 70s metal category, you know, I right. think. Right, right. Man of War, Yngwie, Halloween. I mean, you didn't call it power metal in the 70s. It was just... Well, this is a good... I mean, and this is what we talked about in Metal Evolution. You're absolutely right. There was no term power metal until roughly the 90s when there was all these bands coming out. That 80s, were kind I would of, say. Fair point. Who were creating an older sounding style of metal, mm -hmm. but I guess people just didn't want to call it heavy metal. Yeah. So they had to come up with a term for it. I mean, all metal is powerful. It's kind of a silly term but we'll go with it for now. So let us know, folks, if you feel that any of these older bands should be removed from the chart and put onto another spot. Lisa, are we getting comments about some of the other bands that should be removed? Yeah, I think there's a feeling you still have some symphonic metal bands on there that belong on our to-yet-be-created symphonic metal chart. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm imagining that Rhapsody of Fire Mm, Sonata Arctica. What about these guys? Camelot. Perhaps. Uh, I'm not that familiar. Perhaps. So I might leave I'm them on sure. there. I'd like to hear what people out there have to say. I think Hammerfall belong. I think there's an argument that Primal Fear could belong, but we do have some agreement from Mr. Ritual Suicide that Sonata Arctica need to go also if Nightwish does. So let me regroup here. I think what we're dealing with is we're dealing with some classic bands that clearly belong somewhere else. I think there's some consensus that these bands belong somewhere else but together, and Dragon Force remains a bit of an anomaly. Uh, we don't know quite where they should be put because they're a bit of an island, I guess you could say. So the question mark, my favorite letter of the alphabet, needs to go right there. Jason, uh -huh. we've talked about Dragon Force. You were talking earlier about some U.S. bands that yeah. you feel have been overlooked in this discussion. Okay. Do you well, want a reminder from the list I there? mean, for, before we even get into that, I, th I really think Running Wild should be represented here. Okay. Because I think they're more influential than, say, Primal Fear. Not, not that Primal Fear isn't, but right. I just think they have more history. They're still around today. They've, they've, been, they've left their mark on a lot more bands. So. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see Running Wild go up to represent the European scene at least. Okay, let's put them up there and let's see what the, uh, the power metal hordes have to say about that. Running Wild. Anybody else you feel strongly about? I mean, there's other European bands like Stormwitch and Gravestone. Right. Very good bands that represent the genre, not necessarily as influential. Right, right. But um, I really feel the original US power scene is yeah. being overlooked. Right, um, right. And I think perhaps people tend to overemphasize that this is a European thing and not a yeah. American thing. Or I mean, Canadian bands like bands like my band Cauldron are definitely draw more influence from the U.S. power metal right, scene. Right. Right. Um, Any opinions on this band, Virgin Steel? I think they're great. Yeah, um, they're a great band. I thought, in hindsight, they probably deserved to be up there. Curious to hear your thoughts out there. Adding some nice classic. I mean, here. Virgin Steel is like. The '80s version of Rainbow, you know, right. where '80, where Rainbow went AOR in the '80s. Right. Virgin Steel kind of kicked it up a notch yeah, and cool. really kept the guitars heavy yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, that's a good, that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, anybody else you feel strongly well, about? Well, there's a lot of honorable mentions, like I would say, Nasty Savage, Obsession, Omen, Savage Grace, um, yeah. Early Early Fates, Warning. Awesome. Well, you've got some uh, allies out here. Black Element. I like that. Running Wild, Death or Glory from 89, exclamation mark. Voracious Souls is back. Always love the Death Angel shout out. Yes, Running Wild. So we've got some, uh, some support for those guys. Anybody else out there, uh, Lisa Latasur, that people are agreeing with uh, so far? A lot of the bands Jason's mentioned have not been getting any love, but okay. the world wants to talk about Sabadon. Okay, Mega Miss Simpson spells Sabaton and 
Anthony Harter agreed Sabaton is, I've lost you, agreed Sabaton is true power metal. Chanty as hell. I like that. Sea chanties. Maybe that's really what power metal is all about. So Sabaton. You know these guys? Uh, I've heard of them. With them? Um, I've heard of them. I know yeah. they're popular. They know how to put on a show. I saw them open uh, for, I think it might have been Amon and Marth, or maybe with Enslaved in Toronto. It's a bit of an odd mix, but people were fucking into them. Um, we really have not talked enough about outfits. Sabaton know how to throw on a good metal outfit. Conde or Condi Omen was one of the greatest heavy metal bands ever. And the Dirtbag 87 chants, as we do in Chanty Power Metal, Sabaton, Sabaton, Sabaton. Omen, Jason, you probably agree there. Uh, I'd say Omen for sure. Yep. I mean, but that's me and that's, that's where I come from in terms of Power Metal. Yeah, awesome. Let's put them up there. It's getting big, it's getting unwieldy. Let's throw it in there. Angra, there's an interesting thought. Let's get the Brazilians in the mix. Lee Stavlein on Facebook says, Angra definitely needs to be added to power metal. What a phenomenal and distinctive group. This is a good point. Matthias Nyman is back on Facebook, who says, Angra by far the greatest thing ever associated with the term uh, power metal, of course. Kiko is playing on the uh, most recent Megadeth record with Mustaine, an amazing guitarist and a pretty damn talented band, if you ask me. Uh, getting some agreement from Eastie's blog spot, I would vote for Angra too. It's going, we're going global here in power metal. It isn't all about Central Europe, folks. Lisa, anybody else out there that uh, the masses feel should be added? Or Grave Digger. Grave Digger. And Jason, you mentioned Grave Digger earlier. That's I mean, probably going to make you happy. I, I didn't, but oh, you didn't. I, I support them. I, I thought th you did. There you go. You I, I mentioned Gravestone. Oh, so many graves. <laughs> also, so many, also German. So many graves to dig. Um, that just barely spells Grave Digger. My par uh, pardon to the uh, people who can't read that. Rich at the Metal Asylum said that yes, Grave Digger before Omen. Let me remind you in no particular order, we're just kind of going at it. But that brings up a point. Are we now kind of claiming that this is the great mother of all power metal bands? Yeah, I mean, they, roll, they're please. definitely very influential on the scene, yep. but um, my opinion is that they don't need to be in the power metal category. They're okay, just straight okay. up. That I mean, let's see what people think, but yeah, they're it's just, always a tough thing. Then who they do belong you, with? Deep Purple and Judas Priest uh -huh. and Black Sabbath. Okay, they believe belong more in like the classic UK, what we would call yeah, early UK metal. Or, I think yeah. is what we called it on the chart. So is there a band, in your opinion, that kind of boldly creates a new path here? Like a band that uh, deserves to be at the top of power metal? Or is it, well, is, is it, are we dealing with a lot of gray area here? Like the definitive band, you mean? Who starts, who starts it, like historically? I think the early Halloween really kicked it into gear. That's a good, that's a good, uh, uh, possibility. So maybe we just need to put them up there. Rainbow, we kind of put off to the side. Maybe they don't deserve uh, to be, not deserve, but maybe they belong more appropriately somewhere else. And I'm talking Kai Hansen. Yeah, of course, era, of Halloween. course, of course. The great Kai Hansen. Simon Jonsson from Norway screams Gamma Ray. So does Horror Mon uh, Master. Gamma Ray, for God's sake, and JD Wheels 1, Gamma Ray needs to be on there. I think there's some, some merit to that, Gamma well, that's Ray. that's the last magnet. That's the last magnet? So... What are we going to do? Better agree on something. <laughs> Here we go. Gamma Ray is on there. Uh, if I could just switch gears just a bit, um, we, we touched on this... Uh, a, a bit earlier, I don't know if you've got an opinion, but, um, and maybe it never went away, maybe it's my, my perception, is 
there's a lot of bands that have emerged in say the last five, 10 years, mm -hmm. who we might argue are, are playing and kind of celebrating a more traditional style mm -hmm. of metal. Is that just sort of inevitable? Is there anything to that? Is that just sort of the way music evolves? What well, are your thoughts? I think trends come and go. Yeah. And, and there's always been a certain group of people that have followed their heart and put their, their fandom ahead of being a musician. Right, and uh, right. I think with time, that catches on, you know? Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, the classic heavy metal sound is something everyone that listens to this can relate to. Right, um, right. I think it's the most timeless of, the, of all the different genres of metal. That's a good and, point. That's a good point. And I think, I mean, I, I guess I touched on this earlier, I feel that at times, God love us in metal, it does run the risk sometimes of just becoming kind of virtuosity for virtuosity's sake. Yeah. And then maybe mm -hmm. we lose a little, lose sight of kind of like mm -hmm. creating something memorable. Yeah. Uh, rather than just showing how fast you can play double bass. True, very mm -hmm. true. I think you gotta stick to songs. Mm -hmm. Song craft is very important. Well, that's a good point. I mean, Not just showing off your chops all yeah. the time. But uh, actually the craft of, of songwriting right. needs to be remembered. And obviously this, the craft of songwriting permeates all of metal, but yeah, sometimes in the more extreme subgenres, mm -hmm. it can run the risk of just kind of st a stream of consciousness. Yeah, riff maybe. A leads to riff B to C, and then you end up at Z, and then the song's over. I digress. That is a deep rabbit hole I need to climb out of. Lisa! What are we doing? Well, we have had some consensus about Rainbow. Good. So that should be clear. Okay. Fabio Mainieri says that <coughs> Rainbow is the first power metal band, or at very least, the earliest major influence for the subgenre. Thank you, Fabio. Nicholas Biddle also says that without Rainbow, no power metal. Period. So I guess, you know, I'm just sort of going to inch it a little bit closer in there to keep some people happy. You don't want to start a war. Mitchell, Mr. Ritual Suicide, we need more U.S. power. Add Manila Road. Oh, I've been saying that. Manila Road. We are out of magnets. Was I just we're too <laughs> hasty with the marker on Power Metal? We ran out of magnets. Duly noted. For the record books, perhaps Manila Road deserves to be a part of the story. And Voracious Souls 95 is back, claiming that Manila Road deserves to be there for sure. Any other opinions out there, Lisa, that you're seeing? Many, many opinions. Many, many opinions. People want to talk about Symphony X, and then some people want to talk about how they're prog. Some right. people want to talk about Primal Fear and whether they're folk. It's too many bands. It's too many bands. It's too many bands. This is the trouble, of course, creating the chart. We tended to limit ourselves to around 10 or 12 bands because it had to fit on a frickin' poster, to be honest. And now we're getting into the realm of 20 or 20 plus bands. I think we can feel better about, you feel better? I'm feeling better, yeah. You feeling better? Have we solved anything though? I'm not <laughs> sure if we'll ever solve anything. Any other opinions, Lisa, or are we coasting to the finish line here? Well, did we add Ed Guy? We did not add Ed Guy. Is, uh, are we going to get uh, I think someone said if Ed we, Guy masses? I think I saw someone say if we didn't add them, they'd cut their balls off, but it went by really fast. Whoa. So, Whoa, graphic. I don't want that to happen, though. That's right. And they would probably use Man Award's sword to do it. Uh, I have no magnets. For Ed Guy, I have no magnets for Manila Road. Somebody help me out here. I'm gonna have a piece of paper, I need some tape. This has never happened on Lockhorns. We've literally run out of magnets, but people are freaking out and chopping off their balls because oh, no. their band did not get added. Ed Guy. And do we have some tape in the banger bar? Amazing. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. Ed Guy. Way down there, and Manila Road. Manila Road. Manila Road. I'm just gonna scrawl it out. Manila Road. Is there a limit to how many bands can be on here? There should be. At this rate, so we'll that, be we're here not all solving day. anything. We're just adding more bands. <laughs> 
It's a great point. Jason is uh, boldly claimed we haven't solved anything. We're being far too Swiss or Canadian in our approach and we're just saying yes. So I want to hear if there's anybody who says no to what we put on. Into the light says that at Ed Guy, damn it, I want to keep my balls. Best quote ever on lock horns. I definitely feel that things are at stake. Uh, today with power metal for real. Thank you into the light for that uh, image. What do you think, Lisa? I think that we need to do another episode on symphonic metal. Right. So yeah, I think clearly there's a whole other raft of bands that could join Nightwish, Rhapsody of Fire, and Sonata Arctica. That's become its own beast into its own right. I think what we've done is we've pulled off the classic bands that clearly belong further up the chart um, as more in some of the more pioneer with some of the more pioneering bands where there, there's an intense debate over whether Rainbow well, I would or say if, if Rainbow is going to be on the list then where's Judas Priest as well? I mean. There's a point to be made. Brian Dubois is trying Put dra oh God, to put Dragon Force back up, I agree they don't fit perfectly, but this is the best possible fit. I would tend to agree with you, um, Mr. Dubois, but we'll put them there because I think we're probably outnumbered and this is not a dictatorship. Um, there's some debate, yeah, Rainbow or Halloween, I think the argument there is, is power metal a much more modern creation or do we trace its origins uh, further back in time, certainly Priest um, could be credited with being a forefather of power metal. Lisa? Well, now that this list is longer than Jason's hair, I think uh, we've got our chart. We've got our chart. So I want to thank everyone out there for your contributions. A lively debate. We've probably created the biggest subgenre since we started Lock Horns. Mr. Jason yeah. Decay. Thanks for your time. Thanks for having me. All the best to you in the My band. Pleasure. Thank you. And uh, for everyone out there that wants to help out Cauldron uh, because of their recent misfortune, please do go visit them online. Send your well wishes and send your support. Daniel, Lisa, Lana, Andrew, the Lockhorns team, thank you everyone. Reminder, subscribe to the Banger TV channel if you want to see the creation of an all-metal digital OTT service where we all get our very own channel. Imagine. And also, Banger is now the official metal curator on Apple Music. Go and check out our playlists. They're pretty fucking awesome if you ask me. Next week, we're going fishing. Might have a bit better of a tan. Gotta get out of the snow. See you in two weeks. Thanks for tuning in on Lockhorns. <laughs>